Hello and welcome to another Bikes, Guns, Life, the Universe and Everything video. Uh, this time I'll be testing two UK full power legal limit air rifles, both from Virag. They are very different to one another, as you can probably see. This HW90K is a 177 gas ram. It runs at 11.3 foot pounds. It's a solid beast of a gun and it utilises an Edgar Brothers 10x42 scope that I've recently found out is identical, as in built in the same factory, as an SWFA Super Sniper scope. So <clears throat> I actually thought it was shit because it had Ed Edgar Brothers on it, even though it looks like a real quality bit of kit. Anyway, that's that cleared up. It has side parallax from 10 yards to infinity and beyond and very clear glass. It is a good match for the 90. The second rifle in the test is a new arrival. <clears throat> it is a HW57 FTS, which means field target silenced, although it hasn't got a silencer fitted, although you can fit one. Excuse me. I fitted a Simmons Whitetail 1.5 to 5 by 20 scope on it. Basically because I see it as a powerful lightweight hunting rifle with a low profile. It's a nice scope and despite its size it seems capable of reasonably tight groups even at 30 yards. This rifle has recently been tuned so it's a bit better than it should be. Apparently it's got a glided piston uh, and it, it, does, it certainly shoots smooth and I believe it's about 11.3 ish uh, as well on the, on the chronograph so... It's, and this one's a 0.22. As well as testing the uh, the two rifle and scope combinations, I'm also testing nine different types of pellets. Because <laughs> I really love testing pellets. And uh, so we've got nine in the 177 <clears throat> and ten in the 0.22. Uh, not all identical either. Uh, because even in the RWS sample pack, they're not they're not the same. They're slightly different. There's no 0.22 Powerball, for instance. So uh, yeah, and I'll be testing them. Well, the first test I'm going to do is penetration and expansion, and I'm going to be using two soaking wet books, as I think I remember reading somewhere that wet paper is a good substitute for ballistic gel. So in order of the test. I'm going to be using the Hades, the JSB uh, Heavy Diablo Exact, the Barracuda Hunter Extreme by H&N, the Field Target Trophy by H&N, and then the RWS Superdome, the Super Point Extra, the Super Field, the Powerball, and the Super Mag. Obviously, uh, RWS really love the word super, and have incorporated it almost into every type of pellet that they manufacture. And then I'll be doing the same test with a 0.22 with these marksman pellets, vintage, and some wasps, and Bisley Magnums, some Jumbo Monster Exacts, Diablo Field, and then things start to get a bit super again. We've got a Super Dome, we've got a Super Point Extra, we've got a Super Field. We've got a power piercing and then a super H point. And uh, yeah, it's <laughs> once I've shot them all, I'll be extracting them from the book and then we'll be looking at each pellet in turn and seeing if it, they live up to the claims uh, that RWS has said. I haven't got any like wild claims for any of the other pellets, but. I mean, you can see that, you know, the Hades is meant to expand. That's just meant to be heavy. That's going to expand. That's going to be accurate. Accurate. Pointy. Accurate. Armour piercing. Super mag. Whatever. You know, it, it's always, it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, if, like, the ones that are obviously supposed to penetrate further actually do penetrate further than that or that it's you know 
uh, they'll be traveling at similar velocity so it will be interesting to see what happens so i'll get on with that and then we'll uh, i'll show you the the results afterwards hello again right the uh, the shooting is now over the results are now in and uh, so that was the hades the i'm been very helpful by having the name of the pellet the grains the caliber etc underneath so the Hades has had loads and loads of uh, <clears throat> excuse me got a bit of a chest infection uh, yeah the Hades has had a lot of uh, a lot of reviews and things and uh, it I've never I've never been able to get them to be really accurate though that's the only problem I can see the uh, rifling engaged in the skirt but I'm not really seeing it engaging the, the, the top uh, of the of the pellet so I've never had much much luck with the accuracy of these but I am kind of on my journey of rediscovery of uh, spring guns which is why I've been doing these videos you know uh, I've got like PCP guns but I just find them so bloody boring uh, and I've really got into uh, spring guns again basically since my dad got got ill uh, he's now gone uh, he's died so you know anyway uh, yeah so that's got a fair bit of expansion for a 177. That is quite brutal. So yeah, impressive. Uh, and next, pellet. Oh, and the penetration of the Hades. I mean, to be honest, there wasn't a great deal in them. The one that was a real surprise was this. Uh, exact. It went straight through two fairly thick paperbacks that were, that were wet. Uh, the gun is, I mean, I've chronographed it. The, the gun is 11.3 uh, uh, foot pound, uh, the HW80. But it, it put that straight through two books. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really understand. There's very little defamation uh, there. I can't see whether... Uh, it's definitely engaged the skirt. Let me see. Uh, possibly is in, engaged the top as well because obviously that's got to be that's got to affect accuracy if it if it uh, if the rifling engages the top and the bottom of the pellet and then one of my favourites is the Hunter Extreme wicked expansion on there. Uh, Uh, definitely engage the bottom. Is that mm. possibly engage the top of the pellet as well? I know it does on the the two five versions. Uh, yeah, you can definitely see something shining on the top of that top half of the pellet. So yeah, I found these to be a very accurate pellet in other guns, but we'll be testing all these for accuracy tomorrow. Uh, right, so you don't really expect much defamation of these. Uh, it's quite a light pellet. It's, yeah, it's definitely deformed. Uh, has it engaged? Engage. Yeah, I'd say that's probably engaged. Top and bottom on the rifling. So we'll see. It'll be interesting to see whether the the way that they've engaged uh, has an effect on the accuracy because I would imagine it would but you know that's the whole point of testing isn't it you know we're finding out these things uh, so what does it say about the Superdome the ribbed for her pleasure Superdome has the so-called English bulldog form with a rounded head the design gives high impact and penetration the pellet offers great accuracy and carries well at longer distances. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, it certainly came to a sudden stop. It's deformed quite a bit there. I mean, I guess uh, being a lighter pellet, maybe the skirt is very thin. Maybe the, the pellet casting itself is quite thin. So, you know, there's quite a lot of deformation there. Because, uh, you know, I'm not looking at accuracy here because obviously I was just shooting at point blank into a book. So accuracy didn't come into it. But uh, deformation is what we were testing. And that's definitely got bigger, but it's not really deformed enough that it would cause an issue or a further issue in a if you were shooting an animal. You know, obviously shooting the animal itself is is going to upset the animal somewhat. Uh, but, you know, you want your pellet to deform as much as possible to cause maximum damage in the creature's body. That's, uh, yeah, you can see the, the rifling engagement marks on the top of the cone of the, of the, uh, the top of the pellet. So, and it's definitely deformed. It's, Squashed. It's like what you'd expect of a high-speed impact, really. Yeah. So that's that. Oh, sorry, I didn't read what it said. Thanks to the conical head form of the Superpoint Extra, both immense penetration force and penetration depth can be realised. It also provides exceptional precision, which has been improved by up to 30% through optimum weight distribution. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Super field. Again, you know, high speed impact. Not really. Yeah, I suppose it actually has. It's 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 got a, you know, slightly bigger. Let's see if we can see witness marks from engagement. Definitely on the lower skirt. And I would say there's some shiny bits there. That probably aren't impact points. That's yeah, you can definitely see a line lines there. So again, I would expect pellets that engage top and bottom to be more accurate than ones that don't. And the that's what I mean about the Hades, they don't seem to engage uh top and bottom. Here's the power ball. So that's what it starts out like. I think that's the, yeah, and then this one. Uh, is that the one that's been fired? No, no, it's not. Sorry. So these are the, the armor piercing ones because, you know, obviously when you're shooting air rifles, you ah, you often need armor piercing uh, penetration qualities. Now that's definitely engaged top and bottom in a very meaningful way. So it will be interesting to see if the accuracy of the ones that engage top and bottom is uh, better than the ones that haven't. I would say. Okay. And then the super mag. Oh shit, I forgot to forgot to read about the super field. So the super field it says is especially for pre-charged pneumatic air rifles. This medium heavy air rifle pellet. It's not that heavy, it's only 8.4. Uh with round head guarantees best quality precision and performance for field target shooting. Mm -hmm. And we've looked at the power ball. The power ball combines a premium lead pellet with a coated steel ball to yield a high energy transfer and penetration, nearly match accuracy. Mm. Then finally, the super mag, which we'll have a look at in a sec. It says the extra heavy super mag. Okay, so it's like one grain heavier. Uh, but the, it's the same weight as the feet, as the power ball. In wad cutter design, it's particularly well suited for shooting from from more powerful air rifles. It cuts clean round holes in competition targets and can be used for hunting. Which is interesting. It doesn't say any of the others can be used for hunting. I mean, my, my point would be that a lot of this, what's written on these. Uh, is allegedly bullshit because uh, you know it doesn't really matter what shape it is uh, I mean with a 177 you are 
going for a headshot. You know, that's what you need. Uh, so accuracy is the most important thing on a 177. And really, anything else is just not that important. So anyway, you may make up your own minds. Well, uh, I mean, it's night time now, so I'm not going to be shooting uh, until tomorrow now. But we'll have a look at the the two twos. Let's see what what they look like. Sorry, just haven't thought this through at all. Right. Okay, so, right, first one is the Vintage Marksman pellet, and, yeah, let's see what, they, ah, dropped it, so, yeah, it's engaged top and bottom, for sure, but these are very, very light pellets, and, and probably not that well made, so, you're going to get wildly different weights on these. So I'm guessing accuracy is going to be hideous. Uh, these are actually Lane's special. I thought they were wasps, but actually when I opened the tin, I remembered that uh, they are Lane's specials. Let me just balance those on there. I mean, it didn't really do anything. It just sort of squashed slightly. Uh, again... It will be down to accuracy, uh, whether or not they're, they're useful or not. The Bisley Magnums. Uh, hmm. So, oh, that's the one that's not been shot. Idiot. Uh, so, yeah, massive engagement on the bottom and on the top. But I've, I've shot these before and they, they do seem to be very inaccurate they never seem to meet the potential of the you know they they sound good busily sound it's a nice nice word magnum brings back memories of uh, dirty harry etc uh, and power but i've never really got them to shoot accurately it's very sad but yeah i've got a mate who swears by them but uh, there you go yeah and then there's these so the jumbo exact monster uh yeah, definite engagement on top of those, but that is the design, isn't it? I mean, the the top is, is virtually the same diameter as the bottom, so you're going to get really good engagement on there. But these are massive. So, yeah, all these, sorry, are 2.2. Two. Uh, I mean, that is a big pellet. That's 25.39 grains. Really, they're actually for my PCP. I bought them for my uh, Air Arms uh, S400. Uh, and they're very, very accurate in that, but less so in a legal limit gun. Legal limit guns do not like heavy pellets. Uh, FACs love heavy pellets. So, yeah, again, oh, right. So these are Air Arms Diablo Field. You've got very good engagement top and bottom on that. Yeah, very impressive. But I have found these to be very accurate. These are nice pellets. I like them. But almost no defamation. Uh, we are going on to the Superdome, the ribbed for her pleasure. Superdome has the so-called English bulk. We've already gone through this, but it's just a bigger version. Uh, yeah, so very good uh, engagement, top and bottom skirt. Not much defamation, uh, but should be an accurate pellet. So we'll see about that tomorrow. Uh, Super Point Extra, uh, we've already heard about those. Uh, yeah, it's definitely squashed and it's definitely engaged top and bottom. I can see that. Very strong engagement, in fact. But I've never really had much luck with pointy pellets. They never seem to be accurate. You know, I don't really know what they're for. I mean, I guess the whole, not the whole point, but one of the points of this test is to show really... It doesn't matter what shape your pellet is or what its supposed properties are. Really what's important is how accurate it is, you know, and how accurate you are. And 
you know, whether or not that's just shooting dots at, you know, 30 metres or 25 metres or whether or not you're going for headshots on rabbits and pigeons and stuff. Ultimately, accuracy is the most important thing. So, yeah, we've got we've got great engagement on that. That's the super field, which we've already heard about. It's... So here we come on to something different. This is the uh, the power piercing. It is a smooth hollow point pellet with an extreme lead tip to produce a plus in impact and expansion in the target. Perfect combination of the benefits of a pointed and hollow pellet. Oh yeah, I mean you can see what they've done there. They've got a hollow point pellet and put this phallic symbol thing in the middle of it. Uh, which has bent when it's hit the book tonight. It's gone all wobbly and weird. We have got definite expa uh, engagement on the bottom skirt, less so on the top. But yeah, so yeah, hmm. we'll have to see. I mean, it's either the best of both worlds or the worst of two worlds. You know, it's uh, we shall see. We shall see. Tomorrow on the accuracy test. And last, but definitely not least, because I do like, I've had great results with these pellets. These, uh, the Super H point is a Diablo pellet with a hollow point, which is characterized with a Z by its strong penetra penetration force and its defamation readiness. Perfect pellet for pest control with best performance at medium distances. Hmm. Well, there's no doubt that that has expanded right out. Uh, you've got very strong engagement, top and bottom, very strong. And I have had really good uh, results with these before. These were what I shot in the cams in, the air arms cams in, the old gun. And basically I shot nine pellets and then came to these and these were the only ones that would group in a, any kind of, you know, every other pellet I used in the cams in looked like, you know, five people had randomly shot at the target. Whereas with these, they were pretty accurate. So we shall see what they're like in the uh, HW57 tomorrow. So yeah, that's, that's basically it. Uh, the next video you see will be, well, we might do, maybe I should do a walk around of the guns. Uh, a lot of people seem to do those on their air rifle videos. Uh, you know, measuring the, the barrels and, and <laughs> the diameters of things and stuff like that. Maybe that's what people want. I don't know. Uh, and that guy, uh, York Sprave, he does, he like. I like the way he does it. He goes, let me show you its features like that. And, uh, you know, just, just shows you the basic functions of the, of the weapon in question. So maybe I'll do something like that in the morning, uh, when I wake up. Okay. Right. Adios. Hello. Right. This is the last test. <clears throat> I'm calling it the black, black ballistic cover test. We're going to see if pointed or armour-piercing pellets are tough enough to penetrate the black ballistic cover. There is a mystery monster hiding behind the black ballistic cover, so let's see if the black ballistic cover is up to the job of protecting the vile visage behind it. So this is done in real time, so bear with me. First pellet is the RWS power piercing in 2-2. Two -two. Try again. Ballistic cover is protecting the monster very well. One more go with the 2 2. Oops, <laughs> missed it and nearly broke my window. Okay, <laughs> right.
onto the 177. And the RWS Powerball. Another go, there were two goes. Right. Let's see if the big black ballistic cover has protected the monster. No, oh, it has. Yeah. Completely flattened the pellets. But the monster has survived once more, protected by the big black, or sorry, the black ballistic cover. That's right. Okay. Right. Well, I thought I'd have another go uh, shooting through the black ballistic cover because. Even though the monster got away with it in real life, maybe we can sort him out on this occasion. So, I'm going to try a few more of these pellets and see if we can hit enough times in one place to, uh, to penetrate. That bouncing noise is the steel ball at the end of these pellets. Bouncing, pushed straight through the centre of the pellet. Just try another few. Looks like it's going to play out like it did in real life here. The black ballistic cover is just going to protect the monster. Give it two more. One more, one more. Oh, and you should always wear protection when uh, doing this kind of thing, like I'm doing, uh, eye protection, facial protection. So obviously it's gonna be ricochets, but you know, much decreased. Uh, power but unfortunately as in real life the black ballistic cover was just too strong and despite causing a bit of damage the monster manages to elude us once more okay all right right I've done the uh, the pellet testing now on the HW57 FTS and the HW90K. <clears throat> and right, so the vintage marksman pellets, kind of what you'd expect. Uh, quite crap. Uh, and then these Bisley Magnums. 
obviously there's a lot of pellet drop because I zeroed the scope with a much lighter pellet and the Bisley Magnums are quite a beast so not really terrible not really terrible for 30 meters with that kind of scope yeah not not too bad at all and I mean basically I, I took a gamble with the Simmons scope uh, and it seems that while it's going to be really good for plinking and say 20 to 25 yard pest control <clears throat> I don't think the scope is powerful enough for distances uh, like you know from 26 to 40 yards uh, you, I must say as well you have to uh, my, my voice at the moment is really strange because I've got a throat infection and uh, cleaning my dad's place out and uh, old people are really really dusty and uh, I'm suffering with a, <laughs> I know this is too much information but I'm suffering with uh, you know like a, an allergy to the dust and then I've also got a throat infection as well so uh, you'll have to just excuse my my strange sounding voice anyway uh, so yeah, 26 to 40 yards with that scope, that's fine. Except that I think that the rifle is more than capable of shooting well uh, at, at longer distances. Uh, although it has to be said that yesterday when I, I was shooting better groups with it. Uh, so, it, I mean, I was less rushed yesterday. That's what I've... And then anyone that shoots Springer's knows this. If you're trying to precision shoot with a springer you've re you've really got to uh you know take your time breathe properly you know and <laughs> you know and it's 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 difficult it's 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 really really difficult so uh yeah so i think i think i could with practice even with that diddy scope on i think i could get better than knees i mean those i mean the here that's not terrible. Uh, that's not too terrible. Yeah, and the Magnums were, you know, not a million miles away from each other. So I think there's potential there. Uh, yeah, it's just a case of practice. So, uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, the Bisley Magnum. It was a bit of a surprise. I've never actually found a gun that shoots. I bought the Bisley Magnums for me. FAC uh, S400 classic that I've got and uh, it, it goes really really well out of that very accurate and super hard hitting uh, but every other air rifle it just is shit so yeah that's not ter that's just not terrible so yeah uh, what was I going to say yeah, and the super field wherever that was where's the super field there, yeah, not not terrible. That's the beginnings of a of a of a group, uh, and the super point extra. What's that? Yeah. So yeah, again, not terrible. Uh, yeah. So yeah, at the risk of him uh, <laughs> repeating myself, I can improve that. I know I can using the the pellets that seem to be the most accurate. And, and just practice. Yeah, I mean, the, the HW57 is a very light gun. It is really hold sensitive uh, because of its lightness. It is more of a hunting gun than a target gun, I would say. Although, if I put a moderator on the front, which is easy, and maybe a few strips of lead or something, it's possible that it could uh, it could improve it. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. So uh, then, yeah, moving on to the the HW90 results. Uh, yeah, the, the 90 is, is just nicer to shoot, uh, which isn't really a big surprise considering the difference in price. I mean, I think the 90 is like 550 quid and the, the 57 is like 350 quid. So, yeah, you'd expect a difference. Uh, the 90 feels so much heavier than the 57, but then the 90 feels heavier than everything. And so, yeah, it is It is definitely more accurate, but 
you know, uh, it, but it is hold sensitive as well. You know, you really, you know, you really have to concentrate to get uh, anywhere half decent groups. And so, with the exception of the Hades, which is just, you, you know, well, what can you say? Uh, all the pellets tested seem to group well. Due to time constraints, I couldn't shoot more than three pellets. And I'm leaning on a chair while shooting. And I, and I think that many, if not all, air rifle shooting videos that you, you, you watch show the she shooter in a really comfortable position and often utilising a, a proper gun rest. I, I, could, I could buy a gun rest. I've never, I've never bought one, but I, I don't really consider that type of shooting a fair or natural shooting demonstration. Uh, because all you're doing is basically clamping a gun in a, a purpose-designed clamp and then pulling the trigger. And that, that's really all you're doing. So you're going to get better groups. You, you simply are. And if grouping is all you care about, well, that's great. But I use these rifles for shooting uh, uh, vermin. And uh, there isn't usually a, a convenient gun rest out in the field on a farm or whatever just there just isn't so you know you uh you have to like lean off anything you sometimes have to stand you know you you, you have to aim and shoot quickly and uh of course shooting groups is a great way of practicing but not using a gun rest and if, if you're using a pcp anyway which a lot of people i mean a lot of gun channels they don't even shoot older springers they're just they're basically just a front for a business i think a lot of them it seems to be uh you know they 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 take a gun out of a gun shop and then and then test it and then have a little mention of the gun shop at the end and i guess there's nothing wrong with that but you know it does mean that they are compromised whereas these are just my own guns uh, i buy and sell a few Certainly not in a commercial way, and uh, you know I, I will tell you exactly what I think. Uh, you know, so anyway, going back to the script and burping. So yeah, all right, okay. So yeah, I shoot on the floor. I sit on the floor uh, with the side of my my left side facing what i'm shooting at uh this is if, if, if i'm shooting in the garden not if i'm out hunting uh use whatever position you can get into when you're hunting but i sit there and i saw this this position about 40 years ago in an air gun magazine and uh it was you know field target shooters and they were they were you know they were sitting down with the the left shoulder left side to the to what they were shooting at uh, with their gun resting in the crook of their arm and everything's braced against each other. Uh, so all you need to get that really super solid shooting position is your own body. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's really all I've got to say, I think, this time. Uh, let's just have a close look. So, yeah, the Hunter Extreme, bearing in mind this is at 30 metres, so I'm pleased with that. The field trophy, I'm pleased with that. The super mag, that's reasonable. The super extra point, whatever they were, decent. Super field, not so great. Super dome, not so wonderful. Powerball, surprisingly good. So yeah, I'd say that probably the Hunter Extreme, and I did like the JSB Exact. Uh, I, I really like that pellet. I mean look into that a bit more they're basically like a hades but without the the silly split head on it so uh, but the barracuda is they're a lot cheaper and you, you just can't argue with that that's i mean what is that that's like a centimeter uh yeah with three shots so yeah i'm quite pleased with that and uh yeah i don't know if i've got anything else to say Long live Springers. <laughs> and happy Christmas. Ho, ho, ho.